So hello viewers, this is Wagada Ronald and I want to thank you in advance for accepting to watch this video. So this video is mainly for all level physics and we are going to talk about solutions to UCE that is UNEB examinations of physics paper 1 29, for the year 2019 and today we are going and this video will mainly focus on questions 1 to 10. So if before we get started if you are not yet subscribed please subscribe to my channel by clicking on that subscribe button below so that you don't miss out on the upcoming videos because more are coming. So now this section contains objective type questions and you are required to write the correct answer A, B, C or D. So in other words there are four options options but of the four options there will be only one correct answer and that's what you're expected to write so these physical quant these values of physical quantities may be useful to you one is acceleration due to gravity the value for acceleration due to gravity you should take it as 10 meters per second squared unless stated otherwise also specific heat capacity of water is 400 4200 juice per kilogram per Kelvin. So where necessary, you can use these constants. So shall start with question one. Question one says that the quantity whose unit is a, is the coulomb is answer A current, B charge, C resistance, and D potential difference. So I expected to choose one of the four answers. So first of all, shall come here and say current the units for current is ampere so but for here you have coulombs meaning that this one is off when you go to resistance resistance the unit for resistance is ohms so that means that this one is also off when you go to potential difference the unit for potential difference is volts that means that this one is also off what does that mean it means that this one is the correct answer there are for our answer for question one will be B. Then question 2 says that mercury is not used to measure very low temperatures because it, Roman 1, sorry part A, expands regularly, B, has a high boiling point, C, does not wet glass, D, has a high freezing point. Now first of all, expands regularly has no relationship with temperature so we shall cross this out so that is out then when you go to part c does not wet glass also has no relationship with temperature so we also cross it out now we are left with two options one is boiling point and another one is freezing point now boiling point is related to high temperatures so this one will also be off therefore the option which is correct is that it has a high freezing point therefore our answer will be part D. Then question three says, a waterfall can be red, can be used to produce electricity because it has part A electrical energy, part B light energy, part C mechanical energy, and part D sound energy. So in this case. For it to produce the electricity, you don't again need electrical energy because electrical energy is the same as electricity. So this is off the light energy. Now waterfalls don't have light energy, so we shall cross that out. Now sound energy, it is true they have sound, but sound is not what produces electricity, so we shall cross that out. Then that means that the remaining option is mechanical energy, and that will be our answer. So a waterfall can be used to produce electricity because it has mechanical energy. So our answer is part C. So question 4 says that a thickness of a wire is best measured by part A, a meter rule, part B, a vanilla calipers, part C, a tape measure, and part D, micrometer screw gauge. So of these four options, you have to choose out one correct answer. So let's, uh, let's first look at each of these instruments. So when you start, we shall start with the meter rule. Meter rule measures lengths greater than 12 centimeters but less than 1 meter. That means that the meter rule is off because the thickness of a wire, it is less than 12 centimeters. 
When you go to Vanya Kalipa, the measure lengths greater than 2.5 centimeters but less than 12 centimeters. So this will also be off because a thickness of a wire is too small and is less than 2.5 centimeters. When you go to tape measures, a tape measure measures lengths greater than 1 meter. Therefore, still this one is also off because the thickness of a wire is very small to be measured by the tape measure. Therefore, the only option will now be a micrometer screw gauge which measures lengths less than 1 millimeter. I think you can see this millimeter to, to greater than, sorry, greater than 1 millimeter but less than 25 millimeters. Therefore, when you go back to our question, what we shall do, this will be off, this will be off, this will be off, and therefore, the only option is part D. So that will be our answer. Now we shall go to question 5. Question 5 says, cathode rays are deflected by electric field because they, part A, have a high speed, part B, ionized gases, part C, are charged, and part D, are light. Now, first of all, deflection by electric field has something to do with charges. What does that mean? It means that speed does not affect the deflection of electric field, deflection by electric field, also ionization of gases, and also light. Therefore, deflection by electric field has, is related with charges. So, cathode rays will be deflected by electric field because they are charged. That, what does that mean? It means that at part C will be our answer. Now shall go to question 6. Question 6 says, the rate of diffusion of molecules increases with increase in part A, molecular weight of molecules, part B, size of the diff size of the diffusing molecules and part C density of the diffusing molecules and part D temperature so the moment we see a temperature it means that this will be off now this will be off and this will be off because an increase in temperature increases the kinetic energy of the molecules and when the kinetic energy of molecules increases their velocities increase therefore part D will be the answer for question 6. So now we shall go to question 7. Question 7 says, A person pushes a toy cart along a level road and lets it to go. Which of the following presents the correct order of the energy changes which occur when the cart slows down to rest? Part A says the order is heat energy to kinetic energy to plus sound energy. Part B is kinetic energy to heat energy plus sound energy. Then part C, kin kinetic energy to potential energy plus sound energy. And part D, potential energy to heat energy plus sound energy. Now what we need to know is that kinetic energy is the energy possessed by a body by virtue of its motion. While potential energy is the energy possessed by the body by virtue of its position. So this one's motion, this one is position. So when the person starts pushing the toy cart, the first thing to do is the first change will be that there will be a velocity. Then when there is because there is a velocity, first then as it is, it is being pushed, the friction between the toy cart and the surface will co generate heat and sound. Therefore this means that part A which starts with heat energy to kinetic energy will be wrong because it has to start with kinetic energy. This one also which starts with potential energy will also be wrong because potential energy deals with virtue of position. The body will be at rest. So now we have two options. There is part B which starts with kinetic energy and part C which start also starts with kinetic energy. For part B, kinetic energy changes to heat energy plus sound, while for part C, kinetic energy changes to potential energy plus sound. So this will not be okay because there will be heat generated.
between the two surfaces and sound will also be generated. Therefore, the correct option will be part B whereby kinetic energy is being converted to heat energy plus sound energy. What does that mean? It means that option B was the correct answer. Now we shall go to question 8. Question 8 says, which of the following which of the following effects will take place when two equal and opposite forces act on a body, act on a moving object? It, part A, accelerates uniformly, part B, it is brought to rest, part C, it changes direction, and part D, it moves with the same speed. So let's begin with accelerating uniformly. For a body to accelerate uniformly, it means that forward force will be greater than the opposing force. That means that this one will not be okay because in our case, the forces are equal and opposite. Then for part B, the body is brought to rest. For a body to be brought to rest, it means that the opposing force must be greater than the forward force, meaning that this one is also not okay. When you go to part C, that the body changes direction, the body will not change direction because these forces are equal and opposite. So this is not okay. But part D, the body moves with the same speed, is okay because when the forces are equal and opposite, there is no increase in acceleration. Therefore, acceleration will be zero, implying that velocity will be constant. Therefore, option D was the correct answer. So question 9 says, an object is placed between a convex lens and its principal focus. Which of the following statements about the image formed is true? Part A, real, the image is real, magnified and erect. Part B, the image is virtual, magnified and erect. And part C, the image is virtual, diminished and inverted. Part D, the image is real, diminished, and inverted. So of those three, four options, we have to choose out one which is correct. Now let us first draw a red diagram for such a scenario. So in this case, this will be the principal focus and this will be the lens, con convex lens. Now this will be the object between the principal focus and the lens. So when you draw a ray parallel to the principal axis, will be refracted to con to converge at the principal focus as we see here. So this ray will be extrapolated up backwards to form this dotted line. Then another ray will be a ray from the top of the object through the optical center of the lens. So this ray through the optical center is undeviated. So when you extrapolate it backwards, these two extrapolated lines will meet at this point. Now, this point will be the position of the image, therefore you draw a vertical line to represent the image. Now, because this image is formed by these extrapolated lines, the image will be virtual. In other words, a virtual image is an image formed by apparent intersection of light rays. So, this image is virtual and I think you can see that when you compare to this object, this image is magnified. So, we have now got two Properties, one is that the image is virtual and two is that the image is magnified. And when I, and I think you can also see that this top part of this object and this, they are all in this same direction. They are me meaning that the image is upright. So we have two, we have four properties that the image formed is one, virtual, two, upright, and three, magnified. So all these three have to be met. Now let's go back to our options. Now for part A, you realize that real magnified erect. Now because of this part, because of this word real, it makes this one wrong. Then when you go to part C, virtual diminished and inverted. Now because of this and this, it makes this part wrong. When you go to part D, Rio diminished inverted. So all these ones are not okay. Rio is not okay. Diminished is not okay. Inverted is not okay. So this is wrong. 
But when you look at this, this is correct. It is virtual, magnified, and erect. Therefore, this option is correct. What does that mean? It means that our answer will be part B. Now we shall go to question 10. Question 10 says that the air conditioners are placed near the ceilings other than the floor because they, part A, they create path for radiation to be emitted to every corner of the room. Then part B, make conduction of heat more efficient for the whole room. Then part C, keep the whole room warm because hot air rises and cold air sinks. Then part D, keep the whole room cool because hot air rises and cold air sinks. Now when you look at this, it is true that hot air is less dense than cold air and therefore hot air rises and cold air sinks. You can see that for both parts and part D, they have the same reason, but what answers this reason? For part C says that this cold air rise, hot air rises and cold air sinks in order to keep the, the whole room warm. Now this will not be okay because we know that air conditioners are there to keep the room cool. Therefore this will be correct, but this will not also not be correct. This will also not be correct for this question. What does that mean? It means that our answer is part D. Now I've answered for 10 questions of this paper. I'm going to leave you with also 10 questions so that you try them out. If you have a question bank, you can open your question bank and try it. But if you don't have, don't worry because the questions are right here in this video. Just get your pen and start answering them. But don't forget to subscribe, please. So that is question 11. Try it out. So I think you have now divided the task. You have answered four, 10 questions and I also answered 10 questions. So thank you for watching this video. But be reminded that in the next video, I'll start with these 10 questions. So that you can mark yourself and see where you, get, you got wrong. So that you can make corrections. But please don't forget to subscribe. And if this video has been good to you, please share it with your friend. Share it with your loved ones and share it with everyone who may find or use it useful too. So let's meet in the next video. See you there.